Hello, hello, everybody. The three amigos are back with another 10 verse 10, where we take a joint top 10 of us three and we verse you, the people, BGG's top 10. To start off, I'm Nick. I'm Mike. And I'm Steph. Boom. Every time. Boom. <laughs> Every time. Crush. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't know who we are. One time we're going to go like, I'm Mike, I'm Steph, I'm Nick, just to throw everyone off. People are going to like panic. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, Nobody's going to know who anybody is anymore. <laughs> Everyone's like, I don't get it. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, t today we're going to do uh, a player count list, which we actually haven't done yet. Right. Uh, but this was suggested by someone in the comments. So if you have an idea for a list, please put it in the comments because we do look and we do try to take things directly from the comments if we can. But someone asked our favorite six player games. Indeed. So what we did was we went on to Board Game Geek and did some searches and stuff for just games that play at six players. Uh, we found all the ones that we like to play best at six. We're going to compare it against Board Game Geek's uh, favorite six player games. A couple things, though. Couple We're not going to do um, party games no. specifically because that could be its whole own list, it which will we will tackle some point. in the future. Yeah. Uh, and another thing we didn't do is we didn't put any roll and rights on this list because we've already done a roll and rights list, which yeah. you could watch. And most roll and rights play to six or a lot of them are people, not player yeah. limited. So these are uh, other games and stuff uh, that all can play up to six. Uh, and these are going to be specifically games that we really enjoy we, at that We actually like count. at that player count. Right, because some games can play a six, but you would never want to do that. They're like, this game's two to six. I'm like, that game's three to four, you know? <laughs> exactly. exactly. So these are games I think that we all really enjoy at those higher player yeah. counts. Uh, so let's see how our tastes stack up against yours, the people are of Board Game Are you ready, Geek? Steph? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm freaking I'll bone <laughs> ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's start off with Board Game Geeks number 10. So right off the bat, we're starting already in the top 100. Boom. Already in the top 75. Because number 10 for UBG is Battlestar Galactica, which is number 71 overall. Nice. Which is pretty high for a start. Like, most times we have games that are kind of all over the place, but that is pretty high. Now, we've never played BSG because I've never wanted to. Um, <laughs> me too. Same with me, but I yeah. hear it is best with a higher player count. So yes. I feel like this would be a great fit for, you know, players who like hidden trader games. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole point is that you're 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 the BSG people. Yeah, I know the show, yeah. uh, and a certain <laughs> amount of you are going to be Cylons, Frank, and. Jill? Yes, fam famous BSG characters. Uh, so a couple of you are going to be Cylons, and I think at higher player counts there's a chance for more people to be Cylons, which is why it's more interesting. And you're just trying to figure out who is, is some sort of replicant and who belongs. But over the span of seven hours. A, a very that's That's been the main <laughs> thing for us, and I think maybe for Steph, is like this game... It's like three hours long. It's a yeah. big, epic game that takes a while. And I just don't know if I have it in me to do social I will say, we have a, a hidden trader with a that A good friend length. of ours, uh, Crystal Paisano, this is her favorite game. Yeah. And so I've always said, if I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it with Crystal. Because I know yeah. how much she loves it. She'd make it fun. Yeah, she would make it fun. And so I'm open to playing it. I do want to play it at some point. Yeah. But I'm just like, this is so not my kind of game. But I have heard it's great at six, and it's better at higher player counts, and that it is a very, very good uh, hidden trader game if you like those. Yeah. Steph, would you ever have a situation like that that you would give this game a go, or is it just not going to be for you? Yeah, I mean, I know lots of people whose Battlestar is like their favorite game as well, so I would probably get roped into it at some point. I'm not that excited about it. it I can't lie, so if I'm a Cylon, they'll all know. It's like, it's like I, I just... So that kind of uh, mechanic isn't so appealing for me because I just, I can't do it. <laughs> That's fair. That's so, fair. That's fair. I mean, what a beautiful uh, thing. You're just too honest <laughs> too for these types of games. No, I just, I can't, I can't be guilty. I'm like, I'm so like, oh, no, like sweat dripping down my face. Like, I don't know what to do. How do I betray people? Like, <laughs> I love I can't it. can't do it. I love it. That's great. I hope you get to play. I hope you're a Cylon, and I hope that immediately people <laughs> know, and you figure out a way to win anyhow. That'd yeah, be great. Yeah, that'd be that great, would right? be cool. That would it. be cool, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, BG. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. All right, BG, that is your number 10, a BSG, number 71 overall. Let's go ahead and get into our number 10. Our number 10 comes in at 1304, called New York Slice. 
Hey, oh man, hey, this hey. game is great. Hey, <laughs> Who doesn't hey, like pizza? Slice. Hey, pizza. It's this pizza game pizza. is an I split, you choose pizza game oh, where you make pizzas with these little triangular cardboard little pieces. Pizza shapes. And you're going to cut that pizza into uh, parts equal to the number of players, and everyone gets a, a, se a selection. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're trying that each of these different slices have different toppings. So you're trying to kind of set collect different toppings. You want to yeah. have a majority of the number 11, the pepperoni or cheese or whatever one it is. Uh, pepperonis are bonus points for you if you choose to eat them. Uh, and, and this game, for Nick and I, and Steph, I think you agree, gets yeah. mega points for just style. Yeah. It is style so points. immersed in its wonderful theme. It's the so game great. comes in a pizza box. It it's does. shaped like a pizza it box. It, it opens like a pizza box. It opens like a pizza box. The scorecard the is like... is a menu. Yeah. It's a menu. The scorecard's like one of those yeah. where you take your order sheets. Now, what you want? Uh, no anchovies? And All you right. just make these little pizza... It is so... <laughs> No, it's, it's just really great. beautiful. <laughs> it's really great. It's got what we generally consider the most underused mechanic, which is I split, you choose, which is Super a great fun. mechanic. Yeah, because the the person who's the cutter of the pizza, the first player, they split the pizza into as many players as there are, and they can do it where like this portion has one slice, this portion has four slices. They can do it in any way they want, but the thing is, they choose last. Yeah. So you have to try to do it where you're like. Giving people enough of what they want, like, oh, this person's going for seven, so I'm going to put a seven in this portion. Hopefully they choose that. But you need to leave. make sure you leave behind so you something, something that you horrible. actually yeah. want. And it's really hard. <laughs> but it's fun. It plays in, like, 30 minutes. Like, we consider it a with filler With the teach. Game. I mean, it's quick, yeah. Yeah, it, with the teach. It's very, very quick. Very fun. It's about pizza. The, the art is, like, kind of like realistic pizza. In, it's really weird. <laughs> it's, like, it just works, and it's great. Yeah, it's um, yeah. What keeps it interesting, game to game, is all the special orders that come out. That's right. We're we gonna be doing about different those. things, and um, so it's like you know, you're you're always maybe you want anchovies this game because you got the special order that says eat anchovies or yeah. have the most anchovies, whatever. And so normally anchovies are bad and they cost you a point, and so well now you want them, and so there's different things that are happening every game, so it's really great. Yeah, yeah it's the great. special orders are Try fantastic. It. It's it has amazing. just enough variability round to round and game to game to keep it super interesting. And it's like a great filler game that can accommodate a lot of players and not slow down because you're just, yeah. you have it's to just, split up the pizza more ways and maybe you'll have to think a little bit more. But it's just so fun. And the style of it is unmatched. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen a game that is like cooler within its theming than New York Slice. Oh, yeah. It is so rad. Top to bottom. Oh, yeah. so good. Anyway, that's our number 10, New York Slice, and I'm hungry now. So yeah, uh, I know, right? <laughs> Let's get that's, going. <laughs> that's a bummer. Let's get quickly into Board Game Geeks number nine. <laughs> All right, BGG, your number nine is number 67 overall, and that is Eldritch Horror. Taking down Katu 2. Talk about another very big, long game. Um, I actually like Eldritch Horror a lot, although I would never play it with six. I would never play it with six. Because, <laughs> man, such a long at like two game. players, it's like a three hour game. Yeah. It is a big, it's a fun game. I actually like It's kind of like the successor to Arkham Horror. When mm -hmm. they're like, don't worry, we're not going to make it as bloated as Arkham Horror. Then they immediately did that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, I actually, and yeah, I actually like Eldritch Horror a lot. I used to play it with one of my good friends, Billy, all the time. We've played it with you a couple yeah. of times. So good. And uh, I actually like it more than Arkham Horror, but. It's it's very long game. It's a big big game where it's like you. It's a co op game where you're ultimately you're trying to close all these gates. An elder god sometimes will come out. You usually lose when they do. It's but it's good. like one of those games where you'll play for like three hours and then just get destroyed in the last part of the game. And it's like real fun though. But man, I would never play this game at six. Yeah, that just comes down to it's long enough, no matter what. And the more people you add, who can then be like, well, let me think about my turn. Huh. It'll never end. I mean, it'll it, it 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 it's a great game though. I think we can all agree. Great game, at like three players. Two or three, yeah. That's good. <laughs> uh, but that is Eldritch Horror. Fantastic. Do give it a go. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll get into our number nine. Our number nine comes in at six fifty-seven overall, and it's called Celestia which was a re-implementation of Cloud9, if you're familiar with that one. Um, this is a really great push-your-luck game. Yeah. <laughs> Are you willing to push your luck? Roll some dice, 
move up the tracks, but if you bust, you fall out of the hot air balloon and you don't get anything. So you could jump out of the hot air balloon safely once you reach a step, or you could keep going and hopefully you make it the next turn. Um, and so it's very light, it's easy. Celestia adds in a few extra like cards that manipulate the different decks a little bit, but Cloud Nine's pretty basic where you're just trying to collect points. The higher you get, the more points you can get. Um, and right. safely deboard the the balloon. <laughs> deboard. The problem is with this, it's a great pick, but I'd go down with the ship every time. Oh, every I would always time. bust. Every there's no <laughs> there's no way I'm getting out of that hot air balloon until I achieve ultimate glory. No. Or ultimate demise. It's the reason why I've never won a game of Deep Sea Adventure, because I always go to the bottom. <laughs> every single time. And I die oh, every single time. Here, yeah. Never, ever won that game. And won't yeah. Yeah, ever win it. Celestia uh, has got a great look to it. It does though. have a great look. I mean, the little, look. Little, Beautiful. The little airship mm -hmm. is cool with your little people, your little meeples in there and stuff. Um, yeah, but I love... I mean, simple games like that, a nice push your luck, are perfect for higher player counts because, like you said, like the mechanics is up. What you're doing yeah. is not complicated. You're, you you got to make a decision. Do I go or stay? Uh, obviously, always go. Uh, roll some <laughs> dice, see what happens. Always. So it keeps it moving. Um, and Celestia comes in a nice, like, just appealing package. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's like simple pressure luck is always good. I yeah. love it. Pressure luck is one of the best, worst things ever happened to me because it always goes poorly, but I don't care. So that's brilliant. Yeah. That's so what's part. nice about it is that it's it, it, it's an, a game that plays out quickly, but you're involving everybody. So you have a quick turn, and then the next person will have a quick turn. So they're rolling the dice right away for the next position on the balloon track. So everybody has to be involved at every moment unless you jump out of the boat. And then yeah. it's just involving the people who are still in and so it's like it's very quick and so everybody gets to roll dice and have fun so i love it i think it's really great yeah it's yeah. engaging for all that's awesome that's why it's our number nine oh, number Celestia. nine bam good start or good second one for us i guess now we're two in we're doing good i'm just <laughs> proud of our list y'all let's get into board game Geeks number uh eight <laughs> All right, your number eight is number 54 overall, and that is Dominant Species. This is a, a big, heavy <laughs> game that I, this was one of the first modern board games I ever played. Yeah, we talked about it. Um, yeah. I liked it. I had no idea what was going on. Um, Want to play it again someday because just no idea. I know, Steph, you like this game a lot, but do you oh, play it so at much. six? I've played it at five. I know lots of people love it at six, but I think it would just be long. At it's six. already long. <laughs> it's a big game. I could. It's it's a big game. It's a long game. Um, I prefer it with fewer, like three. So. Yeah, I could absolutely with those types of games see why people would really love it at six because yeah. there's just more things coming at you, more stuff to consider. But like you said, I just all I can think of is time. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it, will it add enough interaction, enough of those upsides to be worth the amount of time? And yeah. usually I'm like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't uh, like you know super confrontational games anyway. So uh, yeah, like something like a lower player count seems better in for that kind of game. But it's certainly a super cool game. If you like it at six, put in the comments below because I want to. I want yeah. someone to make an argument for me to play it. I've never played Dominant Species. Still, I'm, I I'm think the, I think both of us would like it. I, I, I honestly, it, it was so long ago now that it's. You it's, really need to come back. It'd be yeah, fresh. I don't. Be, I don't know. Someone was doing glaciation a lot. Whatever the heck that means, and they won. So do glaciation a lot. That's, That's all I know. That's the ultimate strat. Now you know. Ultimate strat well, glaciation. It depends on how the, the dominant the, the dominant cards come out. So and you actually know but enough yeah. to know. It was our cousin's <laughs> yeah. fiance, and he's this German guy named Hendrik. He's like, okay, I'm gonna do glaciation, and I was like, he just keeps doing glaciation, and I don't know why or what that means. Probably but he's like, okay, I'm do. going to go do glaciation. I'm like, he keeps doing that, and he crushed us. So I just assume <laughs> glaciation. If you're German, is the best way to go. It's a dominant um, species kind of move. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it totally depends. But it's a strong play, sure. <laughs> there sure. you go. I don't know what's going on. That's the ultimate strat, folks. You heard it here. <laughs> uh, dominant species is your number eight, everybody. Uh, good pick. Whether or not you like it, six, put that in the comments yeah. below. In the meantime, we're going to get to our number eight. Our number eight is 1537 overall, and it is Key Flow. 
Key now, if flow. you're a big fan, I'm a big fan of the key games in general, but I think this one particularly works very well. So this is a good pick, guys. Yes, this have, is this is one of those games we've talked about this a lot on our yeah. lists. It and this is up. kind of like its sister game, uh, Key Flower, which might come up on your list. Um, and then also kind of like Set Wonders or something like that. This is a game where if you increase the player count, it doesn't actually really increase the time played at all, which is really nice when a game does that. Because right. in Key Flow, it's a lot like Key Flower, but in Key Flow you have your own little kingdom, but you can activate stuff in your neighbor's kingdoms, which is really, really cool. Yeah. But you are only working on your neighbors. So whether you're playing three people or seven people or six people or whatever, it doesn't make a difference because you only ever work on the Pearson yeah, to the left need the to, pay attention to the right of you. so many people. No one else matters. Yeah. And so depending on the player count doesn't, I mean, it'll probably be longer with more people because there's more people thinking. But nonetheless, in terms of that, it doesn't change the flow of the game at all depending on the player count, which is really, really nice. Yeah, you're still drafting cards, so you're always going to still, no matter the player count, choose a card, pass the rest to the, to the player to your left or right depending on the round. Yeah. Uh, so a, a few things like that keep it moving. Um, I think for all of us, you know, we've talked about this in other lists. I think that's part of what we enjoy is that it it, it moves quickly. Key flow feels a little less mean than yes. key flower because I can work and activate stuff in my neighbor's village to the left or right, but I don't then take something away from that player. Yeah. Which in key flower you can you can kind of yeah. mess with people a little bit more. Um, but yeah, key flow is is and Steph. You love the drafting, right? Oh, God, I love drafting, of course. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, it goes with the name, but there's a nice flow. And, and then it's, like, over. <laughs> so yeah. it's nice. You, you go through the seasons, and then the timing is great, and you do what you want. You build your little empire of cards, and then, it's, it, then you feel like you complete something. So I feel like everything about it has a really nice roundabout game feel. So yeah. it's a good I flow. Think- I think flow is important, um, especially at higher player counts, as the game keep moving. Like you said, Celestia, everyone's kind of always involved. Like, that's important at higher player yeah. counts, uh, so you don't just kind of check out. Uh, keep flow moves quick. Like, you go through it's four fast. rounds that, that like, are the four seasons, and the game is over before you know it. And then you're like, well, let's see how many points are. like, oh my gosh, we're in winter. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> I need, oh God. <laughs> yeah. Now I need to get all my stuff in the right it's place for so scoring. intense. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a fantastic game though. Um, key flower and key flow. And as Steph said, a lot of the key games in general, it's just a great series. Um, but key flow is one that I, I think we've all championed here because I feel like it's under talked about. Yeah. It's a really solid game. Really good. Uh, that seems to have kind of gone under the radar. So do check it out if you're check interested. Out, That's uh key flow. Our number eight. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into uh, board game geeks. Number seven. Hi, right, Borking Geek. Your number seven actually is Key Flower. <laughs> we just talked about Key Flow. Key Flower Told you it'd come is up. <laughs> a kind of version of, well, I guess Key Flow is a version of Key Flower, is a better key way to put it. Key Flower is like a version of Key Flow. That's how I like to think that's about how, it. That's what we like to think it's about. It's not how it works. But go ahead. Yeah, no, but similar. this one, you have like hexagonal tiles and meeples, and you can place your meeples on like different people's hexes and stuff like that it's very similar to key flow obviously but it can be a little bit meaner which is something we don't particularly like about it yeah despite uh, the fact we do like the game yeah it is super cool like you're you're building out your village with these tiles and it's kind of fun because you have to connect roads and things so the way that you kind of set your stuff uh it can kind of be a fun little puzzle and then like you said you get these meeples these different color meeples and um you can use them to activate uh different stuff Mike, Steph, do you Mike, like they're keeples. So, oh, okay. you're right. Get it right. They're keeples. <laughs> keeples. Keeples. Yes. Cause <laughs> um, I, I like this game, but the so here's my thing. Like the last time I played it was with six players, and I never want to play it. Again. Is that right? <laughs> like so, I don't ever want to play Keeple Hour with six players ever. And so that was the last time. It was many years ago. I like the game, but if I play it again, it's not going to be with six. You know, it's funny. It was just a miserable time. I think <laughs> when I've only we've only played it once as well. Yeah. Keeple Hour. I think it was. Was it, it was at five at least, if not six. I think it was six. I'm pretty sure. And. I was, it, it wasn't such a brutal experience, but it was one of those things I'm like, there was a lot of people who knew what they were doing, and I'm kind of like, what's, what does Summer do? And they're like, it's a production, what are you doing? Make your stuff, you gotta get ready, Fall's coming, you got the score. And I'm like, I don't know where I am. Well, and I'm like, Key, <laughs> Key Flower particularly, I would say Key Flow and Key Flower 
are one of those games. If you're playing against people who know the game, you're, you're going to lose. Correct. It's just one of those games. Like you just knowing what cards might come up, or just knowing like how things the score. The yeah. first time you're going to lose, which is fine. But in Key Flower, like literally, people we're playing with, where they're like, you're going to get crushed. And I think you actually came in like a close third. But they were like, you're yeah, going to pack. get destroyed in this game. Just know that going into it. And we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, but it, <laughs> but it, it's not to take away from the game. It no, is not really at all. fun, but at six, games. there's just a lot of stuff going on. Um, but Key Flower is like a classic. Uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Again, we all enjoy Key Flow a little bit better than Key Flower, but it doesn't take anything away from uh, Key Flower. They're both both great games. Key Flow's just got that better flow. Like, Seth, I like that. It's got the flow. Yeah. Getting yeah, that it's flow state. Flow. Mm. It's important. Important. Yeah. It's important to have the flow. And, and I, I, I would recommend Key Flower to players. It's just, I wouldn't recommend it starting at six players. Y- yeah, like, so work your way up. Nah. For this list in particular, our six player game list, I would not recommend no. it. No, fair. Totally <laughs> no. fair. Uh, but that is y'all's uh, number seven from Board Game Geek. Good picks all, but we have a number seven, so let's get into it right now. is 3,687 overall, and it's called Off Teufel Come Raus, oh. which I call Awful Toffle. Our favorite cause... Awful Toffle. Awful Toffle. <laughs> awful awful Toffle. You know, you get a nice piece of toast, you oh. put some Awful Toffle on top of it. Ooh, Ooh, it's nom, nice, nom, sweet, nom, and savory. Nom, nom, nom. Everyone's loving that. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard of this game, which probably many of you haven't, because I have, like, weird games at times, um, <laughs> it is a closed bidding crazy push your luck game um it's all sorts of wacky so you are trying to you know move up the heaven track or whatever and if you displease if you don't do well you're gonna end up with the devil and he'll help you a little bit get a little bit but you're once you're behind you're kind of behind but because you're bidding money in the game it you could potentially have a big comeback so it's all about the timing and everything so what's gonna happen is everybody starts out with some number of money i think it's like a hundred bucks or something and so each round you're betting on if you think you're going to how much money you'll make if you make your bid so if you make your bid of if i bet a hundred and i pull a hundred worth from the center pool of tokens there's range from five to a hundred in there but there's like 100 token and there's like a ton of fives there's zeros there's devils which will bust you so it's 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 risky because there's a lot of like devil tokens. So if you bust, well, you just have to hope somebody else makes a hundred dollar bid. If somebody else pulls a hundred worth of tokens, you make your bid. Sweet. Now you get bonus points if you bid the most and make it. Um, and and even if you bid like five hundred and somebody else pulls five hundred, you will make your bid. So that that's what's neat about it is that you want to bid the most and still make it. So maybe somebody will over. Maybe you'll bid 150 and somebody pulls 200 worth of tokens, but they only bid 100, but you still make your bid and it's the most. Okay. Because they ended up pulling what you needed to make. And so now you're making all this money and then you want to bid more money, but then the token pool is going down. You're like, well, we haven't seen the 100 yet. We haven't seen the 75 yet, but there's still six devils in there. So, <laughs> and so this, the token pool is shrinking and you're, everybody's bidding like different amounts. And, and it's, it's <laughs> there's a lot of like give and take of what you think will happen. And of course I always bust because I keep pulling tokens. Whoever pulls the most tokens gets a bonus. Whoever pulls the highest value of tokens gets a bonus. I love that. And if you make uh, your highest bid, you'll get double your bid. So it's like, there's like lots of things to think about and how much money you have is totally dependent on like what you're bidding and where you are on the track. And, and so there's like, it's a, it's a great push your luck bidding game. And the, I think, there's nothing really like it that I can so think of. So what you're saying is this game just needs to be rethemed to like the briefcase game, <laughs> the game show, where you have the briefcases, one of them has the million dollars in it, and the other ones yeah, sure. have the thing. Like <laughs> that the, would work. What? What's the, but I mean, like, <laughs> The game yeah, show, the you're, briefcases. You're, uh, it's, <laughs> the briefcases. Uh, I keep wanting to say, let's make a deal. That's not the right. Whatever that game is. Oh, Ty Mandel. Yeah. That, one. that game, you just read the because you're pulling tokens and stuff, but you're pulling briefcases, and maybe one has a million, but maybe one has a devil. That's Keep fair. the devil bit, though. I like that. Yeah? Uh, whatever the game show is, put in the comments below. We're all having that moment like, what is that show that everyone knows? 
Um, I was relying on you. Nick plays arcade games of this game all the I time. I know. <laughs> all he, the time. I played it back the, like 10 years every ago. Every week he's playing it, folks. Every <laughs> week. Uh, that sounds super fun, though. I am nice. super into that level of wackiness. And push your luck. Like, that... That's gonna be pretty fun. It should be higher than three. Because 000. if you don't, if you don't make your bid, you lose your money. Yeah. So it's like you have to like want to keep some money, but you want to bet money. I like that. It, no. Yeah, I, I, I really time, like always that. Bet. So. It's a really great late night kind of game oh, yeah. where everybody's just like easy to play. It's it's fun yeah. just to see how you Love do it. <laughs> okay, so that was yeah. tough flashing floor. It was awful toffle. Awful <laughs> toffle. Sorry. It's... Off. That's that's my version. Off Teufel come Rouse. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Nailed it. First Several try. tokens. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> Awful topple. <laughs> uh, it is our number seven. Uh, it sounds super duper fun. And in the meantime, let's get into Board Game Geeks number six. All right, BGG, we got a double crossover for number six, and it was so close to being perfect because our double crossover is number 50 overall, and that is seven wonders it would have been great seven. if it was seven but it's, it's fine not. it's fine it's number six for everybody hey it's a little bit better than seven which is that great. is true and it is a great game steph would agree it is much better than seven anything yeah and this kind of like key flow is a game yeah. where the player count increasing or decreasing doesn't make that big of a difference because you're only worrying about the people right next to you but steph we love this game but you love this game so Rock it i love yeah. this game <laughs> I think it works better with more people just yeah, because you see more cards. Um, so you get more duplicates of cards so you can kind of count on something specific if you're looking for something. Well, I've played it enough where I know the card differentiations depending on player <laughs> count, which is probably crazy. But I know what cards get duplicated with six players and seven players. So, um, And with the new expansion Armada, you can actually play with everybody at the table. Oh. So um, you're gonna have naval battles with everybody that's at the table. So you're not oh. just actually looking at everybody oh, wow. on okay. either side of you. You're looking at the entire table. So w in regards to the naval battles that happen. So if you're playing with the new expansion only. Very cool. Um, otherwise, yes, you're simply looking at your neighbors, which is also great. Um, you have to plan accordingly. Dr hey, draft accordingly, if you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, Seven Wonders is, hands down if everybody knows the game six players is no problem if five people are learning you're gonna have a long game so yeah. it's i've been in both situations so six players wouldn't be great for all new players but it would be great for people who, for a majority of the people who already know how to play or have played before and familiar enough with the mechanics. Yeah, certainly if you um, know but, how it works and how, yeah. you know, you build up that tableau in front of you. So now it's like, oh, I can pay for this and I don't have to pay coins because I have these two stone and things. Um, yeah. It can become very fast, which oh, is yeah. really cool. Yeah, if you know what you're doing, yeah, for sure. And it's on Board Game Arena. It's got a good app, so too. So you can play online. Yeah. 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 It's Check all it good. out. There's lots of ways Plays to play. in seven minutes online. Right. <laughs> it's quick. There you Real go. Quick. <laughs> Takes no time at all. Uh, so you can play it even during these times, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, Seven Wonders is great. It's everybody's number six. We agree. Yeah. Much Boom. better than seven. It's going back to BGG. Boom. Let's go to number five. All right, number five is the meaning of life because it is 42 overall, and that is Eclipse, which is a big 4X space game that it's all of us actually of enjoy quite a bit. Although, I don't know if I'd want to play it at six because I feel like it would get very long. Um, mm, we, I agree with our that. Most, our <laughs> most recent play was at five. And it was long. It was long. It's pretty fun, though. It's fun, for it's, sure. This is one of those ones that's tough because, like, you don't want to have no players because you want to be able to interact with each other. You want to be like nudging each other out of the yeah. way for space, literally. And <laughs> literally, um, <laughs> but it does add um, time. Now, granted, when we played, we also we played a five-player game, We're two with two players. Two people, yeah. So it's you know there is some that to uh, take into account. But yeah, six seems like it would be a big long. I'll be an epic game. It's very fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a great 4X game. You're going around, running around space. You're, you're first kind of discovering um, new tiles uh, that might then provide planets where you can uh, gain resources and things, uh, kind of get an engine going. Uh, there might be ancient monsters and aliens and things you can fight. You can build up uh, your kind of little star fleet and then go battle your opponents and stuff to t t try to take some of their star systems and stuff because those will be worth points. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it's just a fun game. Yeah. I mean, it's... What would you say your is your ideal player count for yeah. this, Steph? 
four for yeah, sure. Yeah, I would agree. I would totally agree. That's what I was thinking too. Three because people are gonna be getting it isn't great so much because two people are gonna gang up and the third person's gonna kind of turtle and probably yeah. win. Um, so four is really the sweet spot, um, and I, I've seen games of nine. So I, I mean, I've seen craziness. Oh I, I people get crazy about it. I don't. I don't know. I would never play no, nine. No, no. <laughs> How would you? Where would you sit? <laughs> yeah, it, this is too much. Well. So they add like double boards, and then there's like two people going at the same time, and like, so there's like multiple turns happening at once, and it's like it's this whole big conglomerate of like eclipse. I appreciate. Oh my god, it just sounds crazy, but yeah, I appreciate the ingenuity. But yeah, um, you know, people who are fanatics love that stuff. So, but eclipse (laughs) is one of those games where it's like that's gonna be your evening for the most part. So it's like, I also don't mind that it's long because like, if we're playing Eclipse, that's what we're doing that day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so like, it's just like, I have to be in the mindset and then I'm good. Yeah, exactly. 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 So I do like Eclipse. It's kind of like our, and I think Steph, probably yours too, our space 4X game. There's a lot of them. This is our favorite. It's the only one we own. We've had it for a long time. I really enjoy it. It feels epic um, while not being as long as certain other games that are going to show up. Uh, it, it, you know, again, yeah, four players is like really the sweet spot. Absolutely a great pick. It's just not on our list because six would not be the player count we'd prefer. Yeah, exactly. But uh, we quite like the game overall, uh, and it's well liked yeah. by everybody because it's number five on your board game geek uh, for six player games. Indeed. So it's going to get in uh, our number five. Our number five comes in at 599, and that's Between Two Castles of Bad King Ludwig. <laughs> the shortest nice. name ever. Rolls off the tongue really <laughs> easy. Nice. It's Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> so this is... I think it's fairly, like, a good compromise between the two games that it's, it's bringing together. Um, so I, I think this was a good pick. Yeah, yeah. it's a... Uh, it's, uh, this is the, a mashup between Between Two Cities from Stonemaier Games and then... The Castles of Madkin Ludwig from uh, Bezier Games. And really what it is, it's, it's for the most part, it's between two cities yeah. with the Castles of Madkin Ludwig theme on it is more kind of what it is. But nonetheless, um, it's really, really fun. This is a game is kind of like a lot of the other games talked about where the player count doesn't matter as much because you're essentially building two castles. You are building a castle with the person on your right and you're building a castle with the person on your left. At the end of the game, whatever castle scores you the least amount of points, that's the castle you score. So it's really, really nice because you have a big incentive to make your castles equally as good. It's not like, Mm -hmm. haha, I'm going to screw over Mike and make this castle crap. Because if I do, that's going to be my score I'm going to lose. So you're, you're actively trying. It's like this weird, like, duo co-op competitive game yeah because you are having to <laughs> cooperatively work with two separate and you people have, and you have to genuinely work together and you have to you really, really do have try. to earnestly work together but at the same time you're also hoping that their other castle sucks <laughs> yeah you know and it's like <laughs> ideally <laughs> so it's like that with between two cities but then it's got the weird all the weird rooms and all the weird like adjacency stuff of castle magic and ludwig and it's a really really fun mashup between the two that we just absolutely adore yeah. Yeah. It's, I really like the different scoring and like you, obviously you can't get everything you want, but you're like, well, we could get one more blue room to get a bonus or we could get this really great scoring opportunity uh, for like the throne rooms or something, the different symbols you get. So there's a lot to think about and process. So I like this a lot more than Between Two Cities, like a lot more. Yeah. Um, I've actually never played Between Two Cities. You have depth. though. Yeah. The, um, the theming that comes with... Um, the castles of Mad King Ludwig and the different types of rooms that are featured in that game really work well over here. Each type of room does feel and score differently. Like you said, you get bonuses if you get three of the outdoor spaces. You get this bonus. If you get three of the food rooms. You get this bonus. So, like, it, it just super works, and there's a lot of fun stuff to think about. And then on top of it, it's like you're building these two castles... And you have the stack of tiles, but you're drafting those tiles. So you don't even get to keep everything. You might have all the perfect stuff for your castle right now. You don't get to keep it all. You only get to keep two, one for each castle. So it's just, it's like, 
it's, it gives you a lot of good stuff to think about, and it's a very quick game yes, because you do fast. two rounds basically of of these tiles, and you draft them around, and you draft the other way, and then you score. It takes about as long to score as it does to play. Like <laughs> yeah. it's a very quick game, but it's nice because everyone just scores one of their castles, and then their part over here scores this yeah, castle. So and everyone just, score. it's like it's it's really fun. It's yeah. really good. It's yeah. just, and I actually do think it benefits with more players because you see more tiles. Of course, yeah. Yeah. A lot so of these games are like, that way, yeah. yeah. Like the drafting mechanics in many games, the more people, the more stuff you'll get to see in general. Just yeah. the yeah. diversity of tiles. So I do think it benefits with more with a higher player. For sure, yeah. for sure. You just might run into that thing of like, oh, we're going to build all, um, everything's going to be for the blue rooms. And then just because the few stacks you've chosen... The, the, there might not be any more blue rooms in the game. Yeah. But if you're playing at a higher player count, there's a higher one, chance yeah. that those things will show up. They might not get to you because other people might use them. But like you said, you're going to, there's a fair chance to see everything anyway. So that's definitely uh, something. But it's a great game uh, at really all player counts. It's really fun, but especially at those high player counts. Really want to do that. And that is the castles are between two castles of Mad King Ludwig. Two of them. <laughs> which is uh, our number four. Five. Let's go ahead and get into Board Game Geeks number four. Your number four is number 36 overall, and that is Power Grid. Oh, yeah. Power Grid is a game that uh, does play two to six and uh, scales pretty well. This is a game where you're building power plants and trying to make connections across a bunch of different maps. The, the yeah. base map is a U.S. map, but there's a whole bunch of different kinds of maps at this point. Yeah. But the nice thing about it is more of the map is unlocked, essentially, if you're playing with higher player counts. If you're playing with two, you're only playing with, like, the west part of the U.S. If you're playing with yeah. three to four, then it's, like, from, like, Ohio over. And yeah, if you're playing... Out different regions on the kind of fringes. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, it's nice because it's the board scales with the different player counts. So different player counts, again... I like it better with like four or five or something like that, but uh, it does it does work well at different player counts because of the fact that the map scales so much. But yeah, uh, Power Grid is a classic. I mean, people love Power Grid. Yeah. Um, and it's good. Steph, you like Power Grid? Yeah, I mean, it, it's one that I haven't played in quite a while, but I always have enjoyed it. Um, I do think it benefits with more players just because there is a, an auction type mechanic and that usually works better with more players anyway. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I think Nick said, you know, like four or five would be really yeah. great and it doesn't it doesn't this was a game that was weird like i was under the impression that it was the heaviest game on earth yeah like i really was i was like this is a big beast of a game and then i played it and i'm like oh no not really like you, you auction off different t types of power plants you're trying to power as many cities as you can and and so you have some money and you decide oh what's this worth it to me and it gets me you know i can spend coal to power this many homes or i can then hopefully get some green energy that i don't have to power at all or i can use plutonium eventually uh but like the things you're doing, it's 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 just you got to be well, able to do game, some arithmetic to add up, you know, spend thing is, your money. But constantly like, like scare new gamers off with this game because they're talking about the math. Like there's so much math yeah. in the game. It's so I math like heavy. Formula. Like make sure to, to bring like you know one of those Texas Instruments calculators where you can do <laughs> like square or whatever roots <laughs> and talk about like the cosine and sine and tangent. And it's like it's just basic arithmetic. It's the math is not a we big deal. We all have in this calculators game. in our pocket now, and people just like talk about be so mathy and i'm just like it's just adding like yeah. 15 plus 8 plus 12 it's like they yeah, oversell you have to sit there and be like, okay, da, da. but people oversell the heaviness of the game way too much to the point where it scared us off for years yeah. and then we finally played it we were like, like oh this that wasn't heavy fine and it's a really yeah. good game too and it's like it's not that mathy don't listen to the people who say it's don't that be mathy. scared you have a phone with a calculator. Just get that calculator out. You, have, have, your you have basic arithmetic skills. You'll yeah. Be fine. yeah. Um, Power Grid's really fun, though. I'm glad it's we a good played game. it now. We yeah. own it. Um, I really enjoy it. it. It's great. I wish people had let me try it earlier. <laughs> uh, Shouts out to Jordan for teaching me finally. Yeah, uh, DJ us. Bone. Uh, yeah, but that's number four from Board Game Geek. Power Grid, fantastic, good classic game. game. Tons of maps. Lots to explore with yeah. that. Uh, but we have a four, number four, so let's get into it right now. Our number four comes in at 389 called Libertalia. If you like those pirates, this is one for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is. It's good. Good piratey feel. You're trying to get booty and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're trying. <laughs> it's a... Uh, 
It's a really, really good uh, simultaneous selection game is what this is. Uh, and yeah. it's cool because everyone starts off, everyone has 30 different pirates. They're, mm-hmm. Everyone has the same 30 pirates, but they're all... Yeah. all 30 of the pirates are different and they all have different abilities that will act at different times different and stuff. ranks yeah exactly. all different ranks all the way up from like the captain all the way down to just like to the lowest parent. yeah to a parent which is the lowest but nonetheless everyone starts off with the same the first person randomly chooses nine cards and then everyone grabs the same nine cards and then everyone has nine cards and then you play uh three weeks is what it is and each round there are six rounds in the week um and then kind of a rest period but each round you choose one of your one of your um, roles and you put it out there and then everyone reveals their roles and then you put them on the ship in order to rank. And then depending on what kind of abilities they have and when they activate, they'll then, some of the abilities will activate, which could like change around the rank. It could do all these different stuff. Like and kill then, off another pirate. Yeah. And then there's treasure in the hull and then each person in um, ascending, uh, descending order. So the highest ranked person gets to grab treasure first of course. and they all just grab treasure. But so you're constantly playing this and playing all these mind games, trying to figure out, cause everyone has the same cards. So you know what everyone has. And you're mm-hmm. like, when are they going to play this? Cause I'm going to play this and then I'm going to switch around these ranks and then I'm going to go first. So I get to choose this cause not all the treasures are good. And it's so fun. Cause by the end of the, the week, you've, you've played six of your pirates. So you have three left over. And then the first player or whoever grabs six new pirates, and then you add them back to your hands. So you have nine. So everyone has three left over from the but first they did round, not use. but not necessarily the fir- the same three. Yeah. And then you go through it again, and then you grab six more. And so by the end of it, everyone has this like kind of rainbow of cards, and it's like, it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I talked about it a lot there. I was it's just, I, was, I always forget how much I love this game until I start talking about I know, it. I'm it's strategically so good. playing that. And game. with more players, it. it it just adds the craziness. I mean, so it gets chaos. <laughs> it's <just> awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The more players, the more like. Has that, that person played Granny Wada? Has that person played the captain? <laughs> like, it, yeah. it, it, it becomes bonkers, but like that makes it still very fun because you're like, maybe, maybe I'm the only one with this card left, and yeah. then you go for it, and maybe you, you could pull if you play the right card at the right time, mm-hmm. it could be incredibly strategic, like advantageous for yeah. you. Uh, so, like, it's just super good about, like, ooh, when am I going to play this, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, just all the cards will have different abilities, score differently, do different things. Um, it's just brilliant. It's you know? great. It really it's so good. And kind of its simplicity. Uh, and, yeah, definitely good at those higher player counts because it will just get wacky. You don't really want to play it at too low a player counts because it becomes a little too... It's too, pretty, it's too easy you to can, read You can other. read your... Especially if you know that person. You're like, I think they're going to try this now. So... If you get you know four or fives and especially six, it's harder to do that, but you might still be able to do it enough to pull off something pretty cool. Yeah, it's real good. Yeah, so that's uh, Libertalia, our number four. Yeah. Let's get into Board Game Geeks number three. All right, BG, your number three is number 27 overall, and that is Cavern of the Cave Farmers. We talk about this on basically every list because it's really high on BG <laughs> and generally really high on all our lists. Um, so we're going to get two too game. <laughs> but your cave farmers, your dwarves, we all love this game. Steph, you particularly love us. So you can oh, talk of about course. it. I mean, yes. I really, would you I play really this with six? This. I would play it with six. I, I have no problem okay. with that. I mean, especially if people know the game already, it's... I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, if if I wouldn't want to play it with like five new players, but um, yeah, but yeah, four is probably a sweet spot. But the again, when you add more players, you're adding more spaces to the board that kind of switches it up from game to game. And again, you have a huge pile of buildings that you can build. So the there's competition to get the ones you want with more players. So it's it gives a little bit more stress. <laughs> and like, okay, when do I do yeah. that? I need to do it now or I'm going to lose out on the opportunity. So um, I, I think it could be good with six players. Um, it's worker placement. You're building up your little cave and your little farm and you make the animals, get the donkeys, do all the fun things in a cave, you know, as you do, as you are a dwarf and stuff. <laughs> um, so you're, really, you're a dwarf. I, yeah. I, I can't recommend this more. I, I really love yeah. Caverna, so. It is great. It's it does so play. Good. I mean, it plays great at all player counts. It really does. Yeah. Um, we just need nice to buy it. it. We need to buy it. I know. We just gotta get it. <laughs> Want to find it for it's on sale it's, somewhere? It's like mm, gotta grab every it. other list. At least it's on this. And every time mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I should get that. And now I'm like, what's stopping me, man? <laughs> what does that mean by myself? Why won't I just indulge myself in some Caverna? It's so good. <laughs> Feast Row is my favorite game. This might be my second favorite game. Well, there you go. I don't know. It's, it's really awesome. good. It's really good. But uh, nonetheless, <laughs> that's your number three. Number three. Number Twenty-seven overall. Let's get into our number three. Our number three comes 
comes in at 1372 overall called Show Manager, which I think is best at six players. Um, Ooh, I don't best, know if I would want to play with five. I mean, five is good. Four, I don't think I would play the game. I would request something else. But six wow. players, it goes up to six players, and this is the game because it you are trying to put on these different shows. Everybody needs to put on four shows. You know, so you have a show of three, a show of four, five, and six. So, like, the blue show, I forget what it is, different queenie, I think it is, is it needs five. Five cards, and so that means you need five actors. Actors being role A, B, C, D, and E. And so you're looking for these cards in a lineup, and you are, on your turn, you're going to take a card from the lineup, and you're going to pay so much money. Or you could flush the row and put out new cards and then take from the lineup. But you are very limited on your money, so everything is super tight. And you hope the person before you swipes with all those bad cards. Now, there's different actors that you can recruit. Some that will re can fulfill many different roles, like uh, role A in the red show, role B in the blue show, something like that. But they'll be worth different values. So you want to look for the one actor that can play the perfect role which will give you nine points when you fulfill a show you are looking to put on a full show of all of these different four different shows so your hand limit is only the number of cards the show is equal to plus two so if you have five cards in hand you can either put on the three show or you're definitely putting on a higher show any actor can fill any role but you won't score points if it doesn't match so you need to plan if you want to put on the show. So once you put on a show, that will be your turn. And you'll, you'll put your value on the board in a position. So once somebody else puts that show on, they're either going to be higher or lower than you. And so you want to be high end on all the shows to get the most points at the end of the game. Mm. So you're, you're kind of like pushing your luck for new cards to come out by spending money but you're you want to get the best cards for the rolls so you just take what you can at some points you want if you see that roll e in blue you grab it now because that's what you need you just take what you can get so you don't have to use a, a nojo for the the position um because so, you get a bonus if theater, you if you fulfill all of the rolls so it's that's a, the it's theater really right there. It's, it's that's the how it goes. It's how it goes. It's really, you need, really perfect. You need 10 things. You can afford two. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, yeah. how much duct tape can we use to hold this setup? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, that's what it comes down to is money. Yes. <laughs> and what art can you get for yeah. that money? Uh, yeah. That seems super cool. I love the idea of like just how, you know, you got all these different air things. You got to, how can you just best you know, do it all. You got to yeah. do it all. It's going to be very hard to do it all. You probably can't do it all. So then you will eventually you have for? to put on all four shows. That is yeah. the game will end and everybody will have put on four shows. Depending on how good those shows are, will be how, how well you do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I love that. I think that's fantastic. Theater is a great theme for games because it does games. often create this. Uh, Shakespeare does the same thing of this like tight kind of economy. And you're like, I have limited resources and things, but like, I got to put something on, <laughs> you know, like you said, do I have like one really bad show and three good ones? So I try to make them all OK. Ugh, you know, there's a lot to yeah. consider there. Uh, so great. that's why it's hard. Number three, uh, show manager. Uh, and uh, we will get into Board Game Geeks number two. Board Game Geeks number two is number 22 overall, and this is my favorite game of all time, and that is Viticulture. Peace for, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Viticulture is my favorite game. The reason, a little spoiler, it is not on our list is because I love Viticulture, but I generally don't want to play it at six. Uh, you can't play it at six, and honestly, four. it scales great at six, it scales great across all player counts. It just starts getting longer is the main thing. Because you have yeah, more players, sure. it just starts going long. Um, I would say four or the three to five range to me is really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, anywhere in there is great. But Viticulture, it's the greatest game ever made. Everyone knows it. Um, and so... <laughs> get the app today. It's out. Yeah, that's right. Get the app today. So I've been fighting buying it. I was like, ah. Oh, yeah, no. I haven't bought it because I'm like, I don't want to Wait for the it. Tuscany part of the app to come out. Then we'll make the Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, Viticulture is a game where you are running your own winery uh, and you there's a big central board, a worker placement game. You have your own winery. And essentially, you are 
collecting visitors who are coming to your winery to see your fields and your vineyards and stuff. And then you're also trying to fill wine orders. You have a wine order that wants like a level seven red and a level eight sparkling wine. And you're like, okay, so then you have to do all this stuff, harvest your grapes, squish them into juice, turn that juice into wine, and then fulfill these orders for points. And it's really, really fun. It's kind of like my favorite kind of thing to do in a game, especially worker placement game, where it's like, I have this wine order, so I need to plant my vines. I need to yeah. get vines. I need to plant them. I need to harvest them. I need to squish them into juice. I need to turn that juice into wine and then fulfill a wine order. Yeah. I like games where you have, so order I operations. need to get to here and I need to go step, 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 step to do the thing I want to do. And this is that, this entire game, which is probably why it's my favorite. But, um, but oh, Steph, you said you like this game at five specifically, right? Oh yeah. I mean, I really like it with the higher, I mean, I don't know if I'd want to play six, but five player opens up that third spot. So um, it, it, so there's normally three spots on the board, but if you play with fewer people, you're going to see less spots. So if you play with two player, players, you're going to see the first spot only. And so if you yeah. have that third spot, you might get a different bonus opening up for a different time, like in the spring or something, you might see something else. Um, so I like that, you know, you have those options now. Of course, the board is still going to be tight. With more players, you're going to have a tight board. Um, but I, I usually play with four or five, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. Like with with that game, because of the way that it scales, if you're playing an odd number of players, it will be ever so slightly more open because yeah. now you have access to more spaces for every one of the different action spots, but uh, not many more players. Not so the even more. numbered games, a four player game will be slightly tighter than a three. Five will be more open than a six. Yeah, only ever slightly, but it is it is nice. It does make a difference to so, know yeah. that there's one more spot available to I can I can plant a card because uh, it can be it can be tough otherwise. But I think we all agree, Viticulture is fantastic. It really is good at higher player counts. It just will be a bit longer. Yeah, a bit longer. That's it. Um, but the game itself yeah, doesn't four change. Four or five is longer. like really solid. So yeah. um, that's number two for Board Game Geek. Whoa. Let's get into our number two. Our number two comes in at 367 called Downforce, a racing game. <laughs> Downforce, I, like I know, it. another racing game. Yeah. It's so good. And this, this, this we put so high because this is a game where I want to play it specifically at six. Yeah. If I can. Like, I will seek Super out situations where I can play with exactly six because this is a game... Um, where you all are owners of a Formula One car, and essentially you're racing around the track one lap, but you are, throughout the game, doing, like, underhanded betting on who you think's going to win. <laughs> and you don't have to bet on your own car. I could bet on Mike's car or on Steph's car. And you win money based off of, one, what place your car actually comes it in. It is so nice do, to place high. Yeah, yeah, you do want to place high. But then you also win money on your betting and how well you bet. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most money wins. So it's nice because you don't have to win the race to win the game. A lot of times people who don't win the race end up winning the game because they bet well. But when you have six players, there's six cars always in the game. So when you have six players, every person has one car. When mm -hmm. you have less than that, one or more people are going to have more than one car, which is fine, and it scales well in terms of the money. But it's just more fun when everyone has one car, and you're all just doing all these bets, trying to be like, oh, I don't believe in myself anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for the <laughs> orange car, because the orange car is crushing. And it's just, and now there's all different maps for it. It's just, it's so, yeah. so good. You you run into these, like, loose alliances with people, because you're playing cards. And on these cards, it's going to show a number of the different colored cars and give you a spaces that they need to move. Yeah. You're always going to execute all the cards, all the cars on the card from top to bottom. They may include your car, they may include other players' cars. So now it's like, I have the ability to move the black car a lot. I'm the orange car. So maybe I'm gonna start betting on black and I'm gonna kind of be like, yo, I'm gonna make sure you get across the finish line first yeah. and start trying to actively help out another car because you 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 choose, you don't get to choose what cars activate for the most part unless you have a power that allows you to. So that you get these weird things where like, all right, we're, we're in this together, right? Everyone yeah. else is down there, but we're gonna do this together. And hopefully come out with more money than your opponent. Uh, yeah, it's, it's real super fun. duper fun, especially at six because everyone's got one car, one power. I really, really liked it. More. I've only played it once at six players, but it's definitely one of the better racing games that I've played. I'm not usually a racing fan, but this is one that yeah. I have in my collection for that purpose because I do enjoy that. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, and I like being able to bet on other people. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you can just give up. You're just like, all right, screw this car. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna go all in. And it's really fun. Or you can just believe in yourself and bet on yourself the whole way. Well, it's ultimate oh, glory. you never yeah. would ever win. Yeah. It just gets rough. It's um it, it's fun. And the thing is, like Nick said, you only do one lap, so it's pretty quick. It's pretty like, short. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't overstay its welcome, which is nice. It's not mechanically challenging. You just play the card, execute from top to bottom That's it. those cars, move them. You can try to advantageously block people and get them stuck behind other cars. So there's a little bit you can, you know, talk some smack and whatnot but it's like fairly simple and now with those different maps like just choose a different map that might add like a fun little bit you can do jumps in one of them six different maps now yeah yeah so um it's just super fun and at six players it goes quick great for conventions and stuff like that because you can get around a big table play a quick game uh Mm -hmm. that can accommodate a lot of people downforce is really fun especially at the max player count of six (laughs) get after it that's why it's our number two let's get into board game geeks number one All right, BG, your number one is number six overall, Boo. and that is probably not going to come too much of a shock of Boo. a lot of people. That is TI4, Twilight Imperium 4th <laughs> Edition. Uh, people yeah, say you got you to go big player count with this. People, and this is one of the ones where I've played TI4. Um, and, like, yeah, you can play, I think. How many did you I play that? Was three, it a six? Or close to? No, you? it Decent was. Decent amount. No, it was six. Yeah, it was six, actually. Yeah. So, okay. And this is one where you you honestly want at least four, five, six. I think you go up to eight. Higher. My, here's the thing. It's going to be all day. So you might as well might play as well the big player yeah. count. Because then you're going to have different different races involved. Everyone has their own things that they're doing. You really do want it where you have that variety. Yeah. I think you can play it at three. It would just seems to probably be pretty boring at three. That's my guess, at least. Um, I don't know. This is... A game that I've played. <laughs> We've talked about it before. Yeah. We don't have a ton of experience between any of us. Yeah. I, no. I think I've almost played I think it, right? We're, yeah. I think we're fairly content in keeping it that way. Yeah. I would probably play it again. There's someday. nothing against the game. It's just probably not our It's type very of much game. not. I'll, I can speak for Mike. Very much not our kind of game. My thing is, like, I would much rather play Eclipse because it gives me that kind of big epic space feel in a lot less of the time and to me it's just it's less bogged down with rules and it's just i just like it better uh but i did like no i didn't like it but um (laughs) it it was fine it's just super not my kind of game but i appreciate the game because it is an impressive game it really is it's just not the game for me it deserves its praise and stuff um and then i guess one thing i and we've talked about this before i really love is that there can be a game that's absolutely fantastic. Like objectively, Twilight Imperium is a great game. Not for me. Yeah. And like that's totally valid. And it yeah. doesn't take anything away from that game. I was saying boo at the top, but I was just joking around. Like it's yeah. it's You, you can know, appreciate that something is a great game and still not like it. Yeah. That's a totally thing that for we all have things. the capability yeah. of doing. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. all. Um but yeah, Steph, are you gonna you gonna play this this year? Is it on your list? No. Okay, come no. on. <laughs> it, no. Let's do it. It might happen one day, but it's not in my near It's not, not on the top of your <laughs> list. Yeah, same, same. I, 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 I sort of have a loose uh, gentleman's agreement to play it on New Year's Day. Do you Uh-oh. really? But I'm 2020 has been a Year's wild Day, time, I'm and I'm like, I might say, like, this year was tough. I'm going to play it next year. I'm going to think yeah. about that. I'm going to think about that. Uh, the best part about it is in between your turns, you can just play a whole other game. See, that's, that's one thing. I mean, we were talking about this. It It's tough when you're playing a six-player game and everyone's turn is completely their own thing that I don't really need to participate in much. So now you have all these people going and I'm just sitting here like a bump on a log. I, in theory, could be thinking about my turn, but I don't have the brain's <laughs> capacity for that. So it's like now I'm checked out. And so if we're playing a higher-player game, the one thing I want, like we have like Celestia... Down for Seven Wonders, all these drafting games, you're always engaged with the game still. Yeah. If you're playing a six player game and you're only engaged with a sixth of the game, it's that's not going to be fun for me. Like, I, you know, because I'm just like, all right, well, I'll see you in an hour. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, watch yeah. The Simpsons? Like, wh- that's not, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's not our kind of game. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so just, it's, it's just, it's a great game. It's just super not for us. But nonetheless, Twilight Imperium is your number one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it's your number one. Let's go ahead and get into our number one. Our number one is 523 overall. 
It's so good. I made the Murphs play with me the other day, That's and true. it's called Medici. That is true. We <laughs> have now true. played Medici. Steph has talked about Medici. You forced us to it. play it, uh, and you know what? Yes. It's I'm grateful. It's, good. it's great. It's good. It's really it's good. It's a good game. I really, really like that great. game. I got crit. And it benefits it. from more players. You yeah. play as best at five or six players. Um, it's a fantastic auction game. It's a once around game, a runs around round uh, for bidding. And um, so there's three rounds and you're collecting these goods on your boats. And so if it's my turn, I could flip one card, send it if I want. I could flip another card, push my luck, get something else I might want. I could even flip a third card. At the third card, you're going to be sending it around, and people can bid if they have enough space on their boat to hold all the cards. And you always have to bid higher than the previous bid, but it comes back to the person who sent it around to begin with, and they have the final say if they want to bid one higher than the highest bid already. And so you just keep going around until people fill up their boats or the cards are gone, and then you evaluate the boat based on how how much how much goods are on the boat and if you have the highest value there you'll get more points if you have the lowest value you won't get any points so there's a range of uh points that are given out um in between and so you're also going to move up the different goods tracks to try and get to the top of these tracks and have majority um have the most because if you have the most you get bonus points for being higher than anybody else and so you're trying to get up these good tracks, so you're, you want your, your boat to have all the same type of goods, but you also want to have the most value on your boats. And so you're bidding for these goods that you're like, well, I can flip one more, but it's going to ruin the mixture, and then I won't want it, so you could just send it, but then it might go for a higher value if somebody else wants it. So it's a, it's a, it's a mind game of what you want to bid. <laughs> it really is. I mean, the fact that you only have one time around for the auction really is good. And you're auctioning your points. Yeah. You're paying your points. So you don't necessarily want to blow all of a your stuff of on money, certain yeah. things because then you have to recoup those points. Um, and you only have one go. So it's like, okay, Nick bid 11. Do I bid 13 and hope that's high enough that no one else wants to do it? Am I willing to pay that? And then, like you said, there's a set collection element. If I get all blue cards, it's going to be very valuable for me in the later round because I'm moving up that blue track. Or do I want to get stuff that has a lot of fives? Like, I went all heavy boats. I had all of the value cards were very high. Yeah. But I had a mix of the different goods. So I didn't get particularly high on any track. Yeah. But I got 30 points every round for having the heaviest boat. So I was like, okay, that was good. And that put me in the middle of the pack. Steph, meanwhile, did pretty good on the heaviness of her boats while also jumping up tracks and crushed me by like 35 or yeah. 40 points. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I didn't... <laughs> I haven't looked back at the score and been like, what did I do? Um, so it just gives you a few different things to to think about. But ultimately, it's very simple the way it works. You flip yeah. over a card or That's two really or three, send it around, and then you fill up your boats. Um, this game was fantastic. It was I really mean, fun. I really, I liked, it a lot, yeah. really liked uh, just all the stuff to, to think about. And we played it at six players. It was perfectly wonderful at six because it doesn't slow down much. Because that auction can't go around and around and around to the end of time. It keeps it. It keeps it quick. You know, it's it, it, there's some time to think about what should I do here. And then the scoring. You have a couple different avenues of scoring. It's great. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's really. really it's a great auction game. It really is. Yeah. So the lesson to learn is if Steph says you do it, you're gonna play this <laughs> play game it. with me because I need it. you to know <laughs> you're it. probably gonna have a pretty good time. She's gonna choose something good. So <laughs> listen to yeah. Steph. She is wise. Is <laughs> uh, but that's our list, everybody. Uh, that's our top ten games. I just I want to do do a shout out though. Do I mean I thought for sure BDG would have Scythe, but then I thought oh it's a five player game unless you add in the expansion. Scythe with six players is fantastic. I probably would have added it to my list if I thought about it a little bit more. But um, that's a fair point. I, that's a fair I, point. Uh, I thought for sure it would be on the BGG list, but then I thought about it. I'm like, no, that's the expansion. Yeah. And so, let's be honest, it would, because I think it's in the top 20. It would be. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, it it, would be. If expansions were included, I think Scythe would have been there. Yeah. So, uh, just so you know, that's something I thought about. I'm like, I've played six-player Scythe about a million times. So. Yeah, six-player <laughs> Scythe is really solid. Um, absolutely, yeah. And there's probably some other games out there that can be expanded yeah. to be six-player. Yeah. The fifth-player expansion is a clever, you know, constant expansion so i'm sure there's ones yeah, that go into six player so there's yeah. any games that didn't appear on this list because as their base game they don't accommodate six players but you've added something or know something that makes it six player and it's really good put those in the comments below because you yeah. know something like scythe is like oh, yeah I, I would play that at six no problem yeah but technically it does only a five player <laughs> yeah. game as it comes in its 
original box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's our list, folks. Tell us what you like at six players. Specifically, not just games that necessarily can play at six, but you really enjoy at those yes, higher player that, counts. Yeah. Because uh, as you saw with this list, there's a lot of games that are really solid, and you really do want to have more people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's great, especially at conventions or if you have a big game night. Uh, it's nice to have those games that you can pull a lot of people in yeah. to play. It's huge. It really um, is. That aren't also necessarily party games, too. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, it's nice to have something that's like feels a little more uh, kind of just normal board gamery uh, and still have those big uh, player numbers if you're just kind of partied out or whatever yeah. it might be. Uh, but let us know in the comments below your favorite games to play at six player. Uh, let us know uh, what lists you'd like to see. Once again, this list came from someone who commented said like try six player games. That's why we yeah. that's why we did this. So if you have a list you'd like to see a different type of theme or mechanisms, publishers, designer, something, put it in the comments below, and we'll see if we can make a list out of it and do it for you. Yeah. Uh, and and that's it. I think. I think that's it. All right. Well then, until next time, y'all. We've been the three amigos. I'm Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Seth. And we're out of here. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.